Betaflight 3.3 is here. And like every new version of Betaflight, it's got a lot of changes from what came before it. New features to help your quad fly better, and even some new safety protections that if you don't understand how they work, might make you think your quadcopter's broken. I'm going to walk you through everything you need to know about the new version of Betaflight. It's time for my Betaflight 3.3 release overview. I'm Joshua Bardwell, and this is the FPV Know-It-All, where you learn everything you need to know to get your quadcopter in the air, keep it flying its best, and just keep enjoying this great hobby of FPV. Today we're doing the Betaflight 3.3 release overview. Betaflight 3.3, the final version of it, released just a few weeks ago. And every time there's a new version of Betaflight, so much changes. I like to just go through the list so that when you see a new option that you've never seen before, or maybe your quadcopter isn't behaving like it used to and you can't figure out why, if you just watch this whole video, you'll have seen all the stuff that's new in the new version of Betaflight. Let's dive in, and the first place I'm going to go is the release notes for Betaflight 3.3. In order to find the release notes, I'll just go into my favorite web browser and type Betaflight Releases, and it'll take us to the GitHub page for Betaflight, or the Releases page, and that's where each new release is posted. So here is Betaflight 3.3.0. You don't need to download this stuff. You can get this stuff straight from the configurator, but I'm coming here because this is where the release notes are going to be. And if I scroll down, here they are. We're going to start with important information when upgrading, and these are key changes that are likely to confuse you if you're familiar with Betaflight 3.2. And now 3.3 is going to be doing something different. And the first one of those we'll focus on is runaway takeoff prote prevention, also known as anti-TAS. That's where something is wrong in your quadcopter and it spins like a Tasmanian devil and flips out. The new feature it prevents that, detects when that is going to happen, and stops it. I've got a video about this, and there's links to all these individual videos that I've made down in the video description. But if you try to arm your quadcopter, and then as soon as it arms, all of a sudden it, the motors surge and then shut off, that's probably anti-TAS. If when you arm and then you raise the throttle slightly, suddenly it shuts down, probably that's anti-TAS saving you from a flip out. You ever try to arm your quadcopter and it won't arm and you just have no idea why? In an earlier version, Betaflight added the arming status flag, which is an indicator of why it won't arm. And you can actually see this if you go into the configurator and you go to the command line. And you go to the command line and type status. Here are the arming disable flags. Going to the command line is often not an option in the field, and so the Betaflight will also beep your beeper in a certain pattern to indicate why it won't arm. And the gist of this change is that they added some new arming status flags. There were so many arming status flags that they changed the way the beep pattern works. Now that's fine. I got to tell you though, the best way for you to know why your quadcopter won't arm in the field is to go to the OSD tab and enable the warnings element. And in the warnings element, you want to have arming disabled as an option that's on by default. And what that will do is, if at any time your quadcopter is refusing to arm, it'll show you on the OSD why it's refusing to arm. That's a really convenient thing. And you just got to know what the reason is. You look it up on the web or something. But that's the best way to know in the field. Don't rely on the beeper. Nevertheless, the beeper changed. Fine. This is a big one that is catching a lot of people out. Arming is now disabled when the flight controller is connected to the beta flight configurator. So it used to be that if you were plugged into the configurator with USB and you plugged in a battery and you used your transmitter to arm the quad, the quad would arm and the motors would spin. And this was deemed to be a little bit of a safety risk. The Betaflight devs are always trying to find ways to make your life a little safer. Betaflight will now refuse to arm the quad when it's plugged into USB. And if you're used to the other way, I mean, you're like, hey, my props are off. I just want to test my arming mode. Well, here's how to work around that. You're going to go to the motors tab and you're going to tick this box. I understand the risks. The propellers are removed. And once you do that, Betaflight will allow the quad to arm. I hope you've removed your props. Don't hurt yourself. The parameter SBUS inversion has been changed to Serial RX inverted. 
this is a really painful one to try to explain, to be honest with you. You know how SBUS and SmartPort are inverted protocols, and you need to have an inverter on the UART to allow those protocols to work, right? Or you can use those protocols with a standard UART, a non-inverted UART, by doing the uninvert hack on your receiver so that the signal is not inverted. The parameters serial, serial RX underscore inverted and TLM underscore inverted tell the flight controller whether those protocols are inverted or not. But here's where it gets really painful to explain. You know SBUS is an inverted protocol. The parameter serial RX inverted tells the flight controller whether the protocol is inverted from what it normally is. So since SBUS is normally inverted, setting serial RX inverted on would actually be telling the flight controller that SBUS was not inverted. I just, it's such a, oh, it's such a confusing way of naming it. It's not whether it's inverted or not, it's whether it's the opposite of inversion of what it normally is kill me. Okay, moving on. The way that rates are configured has been changed and actually it's been significantly improved. So for one thing, if we go to the pin tuning tab and we look at the rates, for the longest time Betaflight has not supported a separate RC rate for pitch and roll. They all have to share an RC rate. And Betaflight now supports a separate RC rate for pitch and roll. However, you can see the configurator hasn't updated yet. Nevertheless, if I go to the CLI and type dump, you can see here we've got separate parameters, roll RC rate and pitch RC rate that you could tweak. For now, you'll have to tweak them in the command line uh, to, 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 to tweak them separately. So that's really nice. There's also this new option, rates type, which allows you to switch. Let me just type get rates type, which allows you to switch between the beta flight style rates and the race flight style rates. Now this is really nice if you're coming from race flight to beta flight, but you're used to your race flight rate curve and the way the quad feels. Rates really significantly affect the way quads feel. And this allows you to directly transfer your race flight rates over to beta flight. Or maybe you're just a beta flight pilot and you want to try out a slightly different way of setting up the rates, a different rate curve. For example, I've seen some people, they want to copy, I think it's brain drains rates is the way that he sets up his rates. Well, he flies race flight and his rates are race flight rates. Now you can emulate them even if you're flying beta flight. Not that that will make your beta flight quad fly as good as a race flight quad because of course that is impossible and would be just sheer folly. The disarm kill switch function has been removed. This has ticked off more than a few people. What that function did was it allowed you to disarm the quad while you're in, f in the air why would you want to do that? Well, if some people have trouble landing smoothly. And with the disarm kill switch option, you could disarm the quad while you were in the air, but the quad would not actually disarm until the throttle was reduced all the way to zero. So as you come in for a landing, you just flip the switch and then you gently land and you drop the throttle when you're ready to touch down and it disarms and that's the way some people prefer to do it. The Betaflight devs have had gotten some reports of people not being able to disarm their quad reliably. Now, I know you're saying to yourself, what do you mean? You just flip the switch and you lower the throttle. But some people had been injured as a result of their inability to do that under stress, shall we say. And the Betaflight devs decided it would be safest if disarming was as certain as possible. Whenever you flip the switch, the quad will disarm regardless of the throttle position. If you used to use this option and you're annoyed that it's gone, if you have something like a Tyrannus, it should be pretty easy to set this up using logical switches just to emulate it in your Tyrannus, but you're not going to be able to do it in Betaflight. It's gone and it's probably not coming back. Smart Audio has been updated to be fully compliant with the Smart Audio specification. That probably sounds like a good thing, right? Um, you, you want to be fully compliant with specifications, don't you? Well, it turns out that there were some uh, video transmitters that were built based on Betaflight's old non-compliant implementation of Smart Audio. And as a result, now that Betaflight has fixed it, it actually broke it for these video transmitters 
Some people would say it was the video transmitter's fault for being broken in the first place, but the, the net result is that if you have uh, an, an older Race Day Quads Mach 2 or an older AKK video transmitter, Betaflight 3.3's implementation of smart audio is not it's just going to stop working. Um, here's the workaround. Betaflight devs have made available to you some custom compiled hexes that have a fix in. So if you have a first generation Mach 2, or if you have a first generation AKK video transmitter, go to this website. I'll put a link down in the video description. And here is a list of the latest release of Betaflight with, you just download, the, download it manually. And then here in the configurator, you're gonna go firmware flasher, and you're gonna go load firmware local, and you'll navigate on your hard drive to where you downloaded that file, and you'll flash that file instead of picking from this uh, pull-down list here. And that will make Smart Audio work for you again. It's worth pointing out that as of today, Race Day Quads is shipping second generation uh, Mach 2 video transmitters and AKK is also shipping video transmitters with the fix in. So if you buy one today, you, this issue doesn't apply to you. Uh, it, it's also worth pointing out that I believe this issue also affects the TBS Unify Nano. It's not the exact same issue, but it kind of affects it the same. And if you're using a TBS Unify Nano and you're having trouble, you can also go download one of those hexes from the link in the video description. Now we come to major new features that were added in Betaflight 3.3. Not changes from 3.2, but new features added in 3.3. And the first one is that support has been added for the FreeSky F-Port protocol. I've got a video about F-Port and what it is, but basically it's SBUS plus smart port telemetry on one wire. Oh, and inversion isn't a problem anymore. So that's kind of nice. Added Spectrum VTX control. You can now do video transmitter remote control, commonly referred to as smart audio, using a Spectrum transmitter as well. Added CMS configuration over Spectrum telemetry. So if you're familiar with the Lua scripts that are run on, uh, on Tyrannus devices, on OpenTX devices, those Lua scripts control Betaflight. Similar to if you're using the configurator, you can change rates, PIDs, other configuration functions. And they do that using the telemetry, the smart port telemetry connection. Well, basically, now Spectrum can do the same thing. This doesn't mean that your DX6 is going to be able to run Lua scripts. I, I don't think it can do that. But it does mean that, especially if you're running something like an iX12 that has the Android handset built in, that you're probably going to be able to use custom apps. I, you know, I'm not really a Spectrum user. I'm kind of just making this up. But I'm pretty sure the Betaflight devs wouldn't have implemented this feature if there wasn't some way for you to take advantage of it. So um, Spectrum users, I guess, just look into that. Added FreeSky XSPI receiver protocol. This is a way bigger deal than it sounds. Because this is a Matek F411-1 flight controller, and my camera won't focus close enough to show it to you, but oh, it would. I'm not going to adjust the focus, but it's got a FreeSky receiver right here on the board, and it's not connected via a UART. It's connected via the SPI protocol, the same as the gyro, the same as the OSD. In other words, you don't have to give up a UART to get your receiver connected and your receiver's always connected. It's just right there co configured. It, you know, it's fantastic. Remember when we used to have to use a UART to talk to our OSD? We all used MW OSD and that was a pain in the butt. Well, now it's just right there on the flight controller, the same as your OSD is. Added fast bi quad RC plus Sphere 2 filter. This is the new, you remember here about Kalman filters? Well, this is the Betaflight implementation of the Kalman filter. And I've got a whole video about how to tune that and how to get your quad flying its best. And you can just go check that video out. This is a, a, a ongoing development is occurring and it's continuing even to this day. Uh, Betaflight 3.3 is kind of just a snapshot. Uh, if you want to check it out in a nightly build or go check out Butterflight, which is putting out releases regularly with continued development, uh, you could definitely do one of those. I got videos on all that stuff down in the description. Added generic RunCam device protocol support. This is a sleeper. This is actually a much bigger deal than it seems like. You know how there's this camera control feature in Betaflight that lets you control your camera's OSD menu, yeah, but it, you like you got to install a resistor and a capacitor, and sometimes it doesn't work, and a lot of you have to play with the command line options 
just a lot of hassle getting it to work with some cameras. Some cameras work right off the bat. Runcam is coming up with a generic protocol to talk to, well, just basically any kind of camera device. And one of the things it's going to let you do is, you know, like you've got this Runcam split remote control where you can start and stop recording your Runcam split. It'll do that. And it'll also let you control your camera's OSD menu. I've actually got a video coming out in a little bit focusing on this new feature and how to get it working on your quad. But for now, I want you guys to be, look, you, you know how camera control kind of doesn't work. It's kind of hit or miss. It's about to get way easier and it's super exciting. Added handling and display of date and time. The reason this is a big deal is because as of today, your flight controller doesn't know the date and time. And this can be really annoying, especially if you work with black box logs Syncing up black box logs to flight to video can be really tricky because you just don't know what time it was taken. Uh, this has added a way that the flight controller can be aware of date and time. And so, for example, if you have a, 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 a Tyrannus running Lua scripts, your Tyrannus can share its real time clock with the flight controller so the flight controller knows the date and time for anything that that might be useful. Improved smart audio update frequency make it quiet audio. This is going to be great for you guys who fly with smart audio and who also use an earpiece mic. When you disarm the quad, smart audio starts talking to the video transmitter and it sounds like in your ear. I'll just keep doing that. That'll be super, super helpful. It sounds really annoying. It also kind of ruins your DVR. If you, even if you don't fly with a mic, every time you disarm, you hear that horrible noise. With this new thing, it'll be quieter. It'll, I think it'll be less frequent updates and it'll be quieter. Won't, won't, you won't hear it as much. That's going to bring us to the end of this Betaflight 3.3 release overview. Uh, I've got more detailed videos for many of these features, most notably the new Biquad Coleman Stage 2 filter. That has huge potential to make your quad fly a lot better. So I definitely recommend if you feel like playing with some cutting edge stuff, go check out my video on that link in the video description. If you've got any questions or if you think there's something I overlooked and yes, despite the fact that I bill myself as the FPV know it all, I don't literally know everything. I do. I might have missed something. So leave it down in the comments. I'll do my best to answer every comment that I get. Thank you guys so much for watching as always. Happy flying.